This question says, a patient is seen by his primary care physician for a routine appointment. An eye exam reveals the findings shown below. Which of the following pathophysiologies is responsible for this finding? A. Increased intracranial pressure. B. Mutation of hepatocyte copper transporting ATPase. C. Mutation of NF1 tumor suppressor gene. D. Type 1 collagen, COL1A1 gene defect. Or E. Agonism of mu opioid receptors. So, pause the video if you'd like to look at the image and think about the question a little bit more. But I think that we need to just kind of talk about what it is that you should be paying attention to in this question. So the, this is one of those questions where there's really no information given to you in the vignette and you're gonna rely on either an attached figure such as a table, a chart, a graph, some statistical uh, image, or you're gonna look at a picture that they provide you which will usually be either histological, gross anatomy, etc. And these questions tend to come up in one of two different scenarios which I've already sort of alluded to. The one will be in statistic based questions or theoretical questions where they say something along the lines of an experiment is conducted and the following results are plotted below and they'll show you some kind of image of uh, some statistical analysis or something like that. And the other kind of question where you'll get no information in the vignette, but they'll have you infer information from a picture will be if they want to show you a gross or microscopic image, show you something that's pathognomonic and then ask you, you know, what a question about that pathognomonic finding. So that's the kind of example I've given you today. I'm showing you a picture, obviously, of somebody's eye, and I'm asking you to infer from this picture the pathophysiology that's responsible for obviously some abnormal state because it's physiology, it's pathophysiology after all. So in this example, I tell you that a patient's seen by his primary care physician and he gets an eye exam. That's the only bit of information that you have. You don't know the patient's age, so you can't really infer, is this an autoimmune process? Is this, you know, et cetera. You don't know any other past medical history, so you don't know about comorbidities possibly leading to the problem going on. All you have is this picture. So if you're taking this question, the high yield way to train your brain to think is what does this picture show in it and what does A, B, C, D, and E represent in terms of diseases and do I see the associated pathognomonic finding in this picture? So what you need to pay attention to in this image is what you see here with the red arrow pointed toward it. Now clearly if you look at this picture you can see that there's something just not quite normal about this eye. And what I'm showing you is actually what's referred to as Lish nodules. And that points us in the direction of choice C. Lish nodules are melanocytic or basically um, darkened iris hamartomas. And because of that, it's associated with neurofibromatosis type 1. Now, of the choices listed, a mutation of the NF1 tumor suppressor gene is the pathophysiology that's responsible for neurofibromatosis type 1. And in NF1, you get Lish nodules, which are melanocytic iris hamartomas. And that's what the image is showing you. Now let's pause for a second. Even if you didn't know that choice C was the correct answer, you might be able to rule out A, B, D, or E based on your understanding of what pathophysiology and what associated disease each of those answer choices is describing. So if we can kind of take out our answer choices and put it on its own slide, let's go through A, B, D, and E, talk about what each of those pathophysiologies represent, and then pull up the picture that you would have seen if I wanted you to pick those answers. So choice A says increased intracranial pressure. And whenever you're looking at an eye, increased intracranial pressure will represent papilledema. And if the test writer wanted you to pick papilledema, they would have to show you an actual picture of papilledema, which looks like what you see here on this slide. So with that increased intracranial pressure, and the papal edema, you're gonna see the increased pressure in the vasculature of the eye. And you don't see that grossly when you're looking at the eye like you do in this picture, but you see it when you look at the vasculature using an otoscope. So that is increased intracranial pressure. Now, 
if you weren't sure if they were showing you increased intracranial pressure, maybe you were able to eliminate B, D, or E. So let's talk about B. B says mutation of hepatocyte copper transporting ATPase. And this is referring to Wilson's disease. In Wilson's disease, you have a very high yield associated finding known as a Kaiser Fleischer ring, which is a little bit of copper accumulation around the eye. And it forms this brown sort of bronze halo in the eye that you see here on this slide. So even if you weren't sure that I was showing you Lisch nodules, but you were certain that you did not see Kaiser Fleischer rings, you could probably eliminate choice B if you knew that it was describing the pathophysiology of Wilson's disease. Choice D says type 1 collagen, call 1A1 gene defect. And this is the pathophysiology responsible for osteogenesis imperfecta. And in osteogenesis imperfecta, because of this de defect in the gene that's responsible for type 1 collagen, you actually have this very high yield finding of blue sclera. Now, if you go back and look at the picture in the original question, there was no blue sclera. But in the image on this slide, you see what that actually looks like. So if the test writer wanted you to pick osteogenesis imperfecta and they just showed you a picture of an eye, chances are they would give you the blue sclera. And because you don't have that, choice D is not the correct answer. Choice E says agonism of mu opioid receptors. And what this is referring to is just opioid intoxication. Now, it's important to know that in opioid intoxication, you get what's known as pinpoint pupils. So the central pupil is very, very small. Now, if you go back to the original image, you might argue to me that that central pupil is very small. However, because of the presence of Lisch nodules, that's the better choice. So you can't really say for certain that this patient is using opioids because it's certainly possible that they just have smaller pupils. However, if the test writer wanted you to pick mu opioid receptor agonism, aka opioid intoxication, they would give you findings that are an otherwise completely normal eye with just pinpoint pupils. So that's how we can choose and eliminate A, B, C, D, and E. Again, the original image showed you Lisch nodules which are associated with neurofibromatosis type 1. Now, in all of these high yield video question bank series, I've left you with the high yield bottom line. And because this question talks about how to recognize different images of the eye, I just want to give you a high yield bottom line that's a couple more pictures. So in addition to the five eye pictures that we talked about from A, B, C, D, and E, here's a couple more that you should keep in mind. So the image at the top shows conjunctival injection or just redness of the eye. And this happens when people use THC or marijuana. So be familiar with that finding. The second image shows dilated pupils. Now a dilated pupil can be due to either stimulant intoxication or the use of some sympathomimetic agent, or it can be due to opioid withdrawal. So as a general rule of thumb, any withdrawal state is gonna be the opposite of the intoxicated state. So if in opioid intoxication, you get pinpoint pupils, then in opioid withdrawal, you get the opposite of that, which is dilated pupils. The final image that you see on the bottom of this slide is what's known as corneal arcus, and this is due to hypercholesterolemia. Now, if you look at this image around the perimeter of the eye, you see that sort of hazy glazed over ring. And a lot of people confuse this with a Kaiser Fleischer ring, but this is what's known as corneal arcus. Now this ring is made of a few materials, but predominantly it's made of cholesterol. So in folks with high cholesterol, you'll see this change as they age over time. Very, very high yield. So this is your high yield bottom line. Know how to recognize changes in the eyes, link them to diseases, and understand the pathophysiology that contributes to them. That's all for this practice question.